Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. This is, a, in my view, quite a special occasion, really. It's the celebration of 100 years of the Joel Chair. And in order to do that, we've put together a really special program. I ought to start, really, by giving you a few little bits of background to the Joel Chair and how it became established. And to do that, I've put together a few slides. Um, and the slides are really in three columns. The column over this side relates to University College London and University College London Hospital. The, slide, the column in the middle relates to the Middlesex, the Middlesex Hospital and the medical school associated with that hospital. And the column over this side, apart from these two images, this column relates to a family um, whose name is Bernardo, and they are the reason that we have the Joel Chair. In other words, they provided the money for the Joel Chair, and I'll give you a little bit of an explanation about the background to that family. But I wanted to start by just putting a few dates up here, and the story really begins in 1745, when the Middlesex Hospital, or in fact, to give it its true name, the Middlesex Infirmary was established in Whitfield Street. They took two houses. They had accommodation for 11 beds, of which six were put over to um, women bearing children, so midwifery. And they had certain rules applied to that. You had to be married before you could enter the building in order to have your baby. And the other law that was laid down is that they could have no female midwives, only male midwives. The hospital expanded somewhat and moved in 10 years to the building which I think most of us would have known, Good Street uh, building, which is this picture over here. And it then expanded in that, in, in that building. And in 1792, the Cancer Charity, as it was called, was established, and that meant that the hospital became quite uh, concerned about the way in which cancer treatment was, uh, was being undertaken in those days, and so it decided it would specialise in that area of cancer treatment. And then in 1835, the hospital um, had a request to form a medical school six senior clinicians decided that they ought to have a medical school. And I, I, I didn't realise quite what the background was that, that to that particular request was until I looked up a few features about UCL. And UCL was established in 1826 and it formed a hospital in 1834. And you'll notice that date is one year prior to that date. The reason being that the students that wanted to train in medicine were being attracted to UCL and the students therefore were leaving what could have been the potential medical school here because there was no official medical school. So the Middlesex corrected that by having its own medical school. So there was some slight conflict between the two departments in those early days. But let me talk to you a little bit more about this guy who begins to play a role in this story so here are the two lines for UCL and, and, and the Middlesex, and you'll notice uh, they form into the University of London, or as part of the University of London in 1900. But down here is a description of the Bernato family, at least a, a very brief description of them. And they are remarkable. In 1871, um, two of the brothers in this family went to South Africa uh, with the intention of entertaining the miners because they were people that could sing and dance and so they would go along to the miners uh, rest areas to sing and dance and entertain the miners. They then noticed that they could also get a little sideline in trading in diamonds. This sideline turned out to be a very large business and in 1888 they sold that business for 5.3 million pounds, uh, a large sum in 1988. They then, with this money, um, went on and did various things. They became gold miners. Um, they, 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 they spent their money quite sensibly, in a sense. But they did include three members of the family who joined at this point, who were much more lively individuals. Uh, one of them became a, a Bentley boy, in other words, raced at Brooklands and won several of the races there at Brooklands. Another member of the family raced lots of racehorses, had lots of money gained through that racehorsing business. <laughs> Eventually, in 1906, Harry, 
the guy that had originally started the diamond business dies and leaves a large sum of money, £250,000, to the Middlesex Hospital. It's not exactly clear why the Middlesex was chosen, but it's believed that somebody in his family required uh, treatment for cancer, and therefore this was a sensible place in which to put the money. And in that process, the Middlesex and its medical school built up research labs for cancer development and uh, understanding, and also established several chairs, one of which was the Joel Chair in Medical Physics. And that was awarded in 1920 to the first Joel Chair, Sidney Russ, and the following, <coughs> the following members of that elite club, if you like, of the Joel Chair professors is Sydney, who started the business 100 years ago, Eric, Eric Roberts, he uh, very much worked with Nobel laureate um, Rockblatt, Joseph Rockblatt, who um, in developing an MSc course in radiation physics at that time, James Tate, who came along later, um, a very important individual scientist in his, in his own right, but his wife and he were both made FRSs on the same day, and they are the only couple ever to have done that on the same day. The only married couple to have done it otherwise is Prince Albert and uh, Queen Victoria. Oh no, Davey's shaking his head at me, but... Oh well, I'm, I stand corrected on that point. But um, it was a quite an important aspect, I think, at that time. Uh, then there was John Clifton, who was there for a short period, uh, followed by Roger, and myself currently in that position. I think I've told you enough about the Joel Chair and how it's become established, and I now wanted to pass you on to the second part of the programme, and we're going to have two talks by PhD students, and I've asked their supervisors if they would introduce those talks in order to give a, a couple of minutes background. So I think the first one is going to be Savas, and so that, that means uh, Sandro will give us a couple of minutes introduction to the talk, and then Savas might want to come and get his slides ready whilst that introduction is taking place. Thank you. <laughs>